Welcome back, everybody. I should have the microphone on, really, because the... Is that sticking up there quite a bit? I don't know what I've been doing. So I'm, I'm growing the beard. I'm going Abrahamic faith. I'm going Christian Muslim. Islamo-Christian uh, beard until about April. <laughs> Anywho. So <clears throat> I have fantasies, right? A fantasy. And in my fantasies, I'm playing out a scenario. And as I play out the scenario, I discover things. So here we go. All right. So, so, okay. So the person that I'm looking after at the moment is, um, the person I'm looking after, uh, who has the degenerative disorder. As I said in previous videos, I went out with about maybe 12 years ago. And I got a call. I haven't heard from her from, you know, for about nine months or something like that uh, before Christmas. And um, then got a call that she was having a relapse and all the rest. And she lost the, the ability to walk. So now I'm bringing her food um, until we get home help for her. Okay, because I can't do it myself. Um, and anyway, I'm not in her life. Anyway, that's a separate issue. All right, so. What am I talking about? What I'm what I'm talking about is so in my mind I was playing in a fantasy and basically I buy her food every two days, right? And so I got her a couple of jars of roast tomato and lentil soup, and um, she doesn't like it. So she said, "I can take away. I can take the soup out of the fridge, her fridge, and use it myself." So I take it away. I'll take it home. That's fine. And I was thinking, why do I like tomato soup so much? You know, and here's the thing, right? It's kid food. You know, when I was a child, my mother used to give us tomato soup. You know, and I used to love it. I really loved it. You know, tomato soup. And um, you thought it was shit soup back then. It was really bad. It was powdered, you know. So that will tell you the kind of how much food has come a long way since, since when I was a kid, right? But here's the thing. That was my child food. One of my child foods. Now, then I was fantasizing. I was like, yeah, you know, I was like, you know, um, you know, the, uh, unlike the alien, alien foreign foods that is your child food. I was going to like beetroot and stuff like this because she eats all this kind of she she just beetroot at the wazoo and all this. And I know it's because that's what they ate in Hungary, you know. And um, <laughs> I was, then, I, then my mind switched on to another scenario, which is. Anybody who's going out with a foreign national from Ireland is uh, has the same experience, you know, that they go, oh, well, we used to eat this as kids and your foreign food, your foreign child food is, I don't know, you know, it's like, what the hell is that? And, and so there's no relatability, you know, and I was like, they don't relate to that. And that becomes even stronger. Like I've had a beer now, right? So. I'm in a different state of mind. And what I think is that, like, when you change consciousness and we'll say, like, um, you're in a different state of consciousness and you're more solid in, in, your, in your experiences as a child and growing up and that's more solid in you as you're relating to that person at the time. <clears throat> and you can't relate to that person at that time because they have a different world of experiences of food types to you. And so your cultures aren't connecting because they're two completely different things. Their food types are so different. You know, like as in my friend who is Hungarian, beetroot. I mean, I never ate beetroot. Beetroot is not a part of my upbringing or my, my childhood experience at all, you know. So I'm like, oh, geez, you know, how can you eat so much of that stuff, you know. And so I'm thinking, like, that was the fantasy was that how... Can you meld cultures together like this? People with such vast, different eating experiences, you know, such vast, different, um, you know, taste experiences from your childhood, you know. And I know we have different taste experiences among individuals, even in Ireland. But in Ireland, we have a, a, a particular palate. In foreign countries, their food is so different. Like the only reason we can eat that food here or they, when they come here, can eat that food here 
is that we have international trade. We have airplanes flying in their food. If that, if that stops, they start eating what we eat or what we know, what we grew up eating, which is potatoes, carrots, cabbage, um, onions, you know? So, like, how is this going to work? Multiculturalism is not a strength. 